Welcome back bosses to another beginner guide video with your man MBR. Today we're going to be looking at Delta. Delta is a portfolio tracker. It's the one I personally use and maybe ones on the market that are better suited to yourself is just playing around with them and seeing what you like. Again, do your own research into these things. This is just my personal opinion. So if you do wish to get Delta to be able to track your portfolio, all you have to do is open up your Play Store, search for Delta, it's D-E-L-T-A, and it's the Delta Investment Portfolio Tracker. I've already have it installed. Uh, you can read the reviews and see what you think of it. Have a look at the screenshots. Make sure that you're happy with everything. If you are, install Delta. Once you have Delta installed, it will look like something like this on the screen. Your new portfolio starts here. The moon is on the horizon. So if we click plus, that has had a big change recently where there's a lot more actually on here. You can now add stocks and shares. So you can even do it for stocks. Uh, I personally just only really hold crypto these days, so we're going to be doing cryptocurrency. So from here, you now need to add a cryptocurrency transaction. So depending on where you bought your crypto from, they, you know, they have multiple websites on here. They have PancakeSwap, Coinbase, Crypto.com, Binance. For altcoins, I do most of my buying on Binance, so I'm going to show you how to add a transaction from Binance. So all we have to do is open up uh, Binance. When we're on the Binance homepage, we go to orders in the top right, look for spot order, and here, if you click on order history in the left hand side, you'll be able to see your most recent transactions. Here I have four transactions which I've done in the last week. You can go back in history and find all your old ones if you wish, wish to do so. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to be looking at these four transactions here. My most recent one is I bought some Binance US dollar to send a pancake swap. But for the purpose here, we're going to be looking at this Bitcoin transaction I did here, which was on the 18th of April 2021 at 7 in the morning. I bought $251 worth which gave me 0.0449 Bitcoin at a price of $55,800. And that was filled, it was successfully done. And then if you click on the little arrow here, you'll be able to see that there was a fee of 0.0000450 Bitcoin. So to add this to the data, it's very easy. There are some APIs that you can use, but please, again, if you are looking to do that, uh, do your own research. I personally add all my transactions manually as I do a bit of trading here and then. And it just it would just mess up the API. But for the purposes of here, this is what we're doing. So we type in Bitcoin BTC and we find Bitcoin there. We want to change the exchange to Binance. Um, this is just a good way of remembering everything there is. You don't have to necessarily change the exchange if you don't want to, but I just find it a good way of tracking things. Once you get into the habit of doing this, things become a lot quicker and also sometimes doubt remembers what you've previously done. So if I bought Bitcoin again, it would note that I did it with uh, Binance and also in USDT. So we type in USDT. And there it is. Uh, it was on the 18th of April. Again, you don't have to have the dates if you don't want to. If you do select the date, it does actually, you can see the price change there, so it gives you a more accurate price. I've really never been fussed with the time, so it's totally up to you on how you want to save your portfolio. Like the time is not very important. The date maybe more so, as it does actually help the price, but again, we'll be editing the price to how we want it. So it has 55,812, which I don't think is actually too far off from where we bought it. Uh, we bought it at 55,800 so you can um, hover over it and highlight it if you wish or you can just type it in manual whatever you find easiest and paste it in there and boom obviously we bought uh, it does become probably a bit easier to copy and paste it when you <laughs> when you have all the zeros is just get you know, trying to count all the zeros sometimes it gets a little bit confusing and then uh, obviously there's the transaction fee where we click on that arrow we find that and we copy that especially with this one there's a lot of zeros to count um, we want to change it to Bitcoin and paste in my Bitcoin purchase there. So as uh, I currently have nothing on my portfolio, if we were to add it in like this, it's going to leave a big red patch with US dollar T as we currently don't have any US dollar T. So normally what you'd actually need to do is buy some US dollar T or record the transaction. So we could um, basically what, what we need to do here is you can either, you don't have to add the US dollar T in. There's not a reason to do it. So what you could do because if you go to transactions again and just turn it off, then it'd just be like you you uh, had the money and it d doesn't record that. But ideally, you probably want to have the US dollar T on there. So what we can do is if we click add, add manual transaction, crypto, and then we'll search US dollar T. Um, again, it can be anywhere. We'll just, again, we'll, we'll say, for example, you know, we'll say we bought on Coinbase. Uh, no, Coinbase doesn't have US DT. We'll go KuCoin then. Um, trading pair was uh, again so this is the trading pairs say so we bought it in US dollar at a buy price of that and we bought it on the uh, well, it needs to be a little bit ahead so we bought on the say the 16th of April 
and we bought we say we bought a thousand um again you can add your t this is where it keeps going back and back eventually your top one would be here so we're not going to actually have the uh, us dollar holdings but we'll put this here so we now currently have uh thousand dollars worth of tether and then if we go back to bitcoin click on it transactions click on this and now we can actually add it update the transaction and this way it will actually knock it off our usdt as you can see it's a little bit lower now let's so on that transaction i am actually down money i lost uh free currently down 375 which is two percent but you can look at these charts all day it will go up and it will go down we just got to hope that it goes up Cool thing with data you can track in the last hour, so it's gone it's gone down 86p in a day. It was actually it's up in the day, so it obviously dropped down quite a bit as you can see in the week to the month, to the year, and then to all, which is going to be the same as we've only just built this portfolio. One thing very important with Delta that I do recommend doing is if you click on the top left here, click on the settings bar, and if you scroll down, uh, one thing actually you can change your local fiat currency. I'm obviously in pounds because I'm a very British person, but say if you're a US dollar, you can find US dollar there, or if you're a European, you can find euros, or if you're Thai, uh, I think Thai, uh, Thai baht, THB, um, or you know, obviously we're, we're pounds, so that's what I'm using. So that's important, your local fiat currency. And then also, what my main point, what I was going to say is the data here is that you want to generate a recovery code. Click on this and it's going to give you a code. You can save the key. I'm not going to click on mine because otherwise you can uh, steal my data and find up to all the big ass transactions that I'm making. Um, Lols. But if you click on generate recovery code, it's going to bring up a QR code and a number. Just copy that. So if anything does happen to your Delta, if you accidentally wipe your phone, which I have done so, you can recover your data. There'd be nothing worse than uh, something happening to your phone and having five years worth of crypto transactions suddenly lost. You know, where, where do you even start with that? So again, that's a little important thing to remember. But as easy as that, again, when you want a next transaction, just click add, add manual transaction, crypto, and then find out the coin you wish to do so, which is say dodge, find dodge on your list, and then boom. And the same works if you want to sell, you just click on our tether, click on transactions, add new transaction. Uh, we, we can change our trading pair, say we sell it for a SI, uh, we, we s sold, we can click sell all there, or we would just say we sold two hundred dollars worth. Uh, there was a transaction fee of a pound, and then we click add transaction. Once it loads up, you can see our market values dropped down a little bit, and our total owns dropped, and we now currently have some psi here. Easy as that. It's a little bit of a long process typing in these things, but once you get in the hang of it, I find it to be pretty quick. And also, when you're gaining money, it's always nice to see the numbers going up and up. But that's how to use Delta, guys. Hopefully this was simple enough for you guys to understand. If there's anything you have struggled with in this video, please leave a comment. I will try my best to respond as soon as possible. Take care, guys. Peace.